Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to our local garden center. I'm just gonna swing around a little bit here so you can get to see where I am. I am in the back of the garden center where they keep all of their trees. So they have like fruit trees, ornamental trees, all different kind of beautiful things in here. And of course, I already came across one thing that really excited me. So I'm just gonna point at it now. Ooh, beautiful, really dark red foliage acer. I was really excited about that. I thought, can we just have a second one? Can we just buy maybe another one and put it somewhere? But then I looked at the tag and I was like, hmm, that grows to quite a size. So maybe not, maybe not today, maybe later, who knows? Let's see what comes. Anyways, today's video is not about planting a tree. Today's video is about planting up all of my pots or most of my pots. Because what happened is that I left for three weeks in summer to go back to Germany and none of my pots are on any kind of irrigation or watering system and nobody was like taking care of them so nobody was watering them so when i came back i looked at my pots and i was like whoa halloween came early this year because this is exactly how they were looking everything was dead as a doornail brown just the spider webs were basically missing so what i did is i just took all of my pots and was just hiding them behind the garden shed next to the garage so they were a little bit like out of sight out of mind but now's the perfect time to bring them all back because all the beautiful autumn plants arrived in the garden centers and i'm thrilled and really excited to do this little potting video with you because this is always so much fun because potting i think is almost like a little staging when you put things in your border like perennials this is like a conscious decision because they are there, you plant them, they stay there. While well, when you put things in pots, a lot of those things might not thrive in the pots or you just put them somewhere afterwards. Or like some of the things like mums or heather, for example, they would just fade out for me at least after the winter season. So it's like a little fun thing to do. And even I haven't checked what the garden center has in the front. So I just ran to the back here to do this like, hi guys, welcome you video for you so i'm really excited to see what i'm going to find i keep my fingers crossed that there's some like nice things and nice colors i know a lot of you when you think about like autumn and autumn potting you go for all of these like warm spicy tones and i think it's really beautiful to have like orange pumpkins and all of that but since my garden is really focusing more on different colors like purple pinks whites even reds i got a lot of red going on and like dark red foliage so I want to keep the pots also color coordinated so they really fit and make sense with the garden. So I'm really hoping that I find all of those beautiful colors that I have in the garden you now for mums and all different kind of plums. So let's see, let's go to the front and see what they have. This is what I came up with. I just went to the back of the garden center with my little shopping cart because there's still some customers at the front and I don't want to like disturb them or interrupt their business going on here. So I found a quiet corner here located between the fruit trees where I think I just have a moment just to quickly show you what I picked and how beautiful everything is looking. So I think already on the first glance, you can see that color wise, it all matches really well. And it's definitely on brand for me in terms of my garden style and everything, because I really love all of these like violets, purple, pinks, and this is exactly what you see here in the shopping cart. So the first thing I'm gonna show you, this is an aster. And it's a good example of how things are labeled when I go shopping here. Not everything is like that, try to get it out of the shopping cart, but often things come with a quite random label. And it says, I try to say it now properly in Polish, kwiaty rabatowe. And what it means basically is just like flower for a border planting. So that's the entire information about this aster. So I have no idea about variety or anything, but what I know and what I can see is that the foliage looking good, there's no mildew, it's completely green all the way down to the base. The flowers are looking really pretty already when you look at the first ones that just open and it's still full of buds, which is always good because then I know like it's gonna look pretty for the next few couple of weeks to come. The next thing, I have some heather here and that is a beautiful color for a heather, I think. Really lovely, lovely big flowers. And as you can tell already, in the back you see the red uh, hapanacetum. So this is a beautiful combination. So. I ended up picking three red hat penicetum because I think they're just beautiful, like this lovely airy texture that they bring to the entire thing. Gonna look great in pots, but they are definitely not hardy here, at least on a Baltic season, on Baltic winter, I mean. Um, yeah, they just won't make it. So they're just like a little fun plant only for, for this project. Then the last thing I have in here are two eucara. So they're definitely gonna make it. They're also thriving in pots. And if you look at it closer, like the variegation that's going on on the leaves, is really glorious 
And again, this is a really pretty combination all together. All these pinks of like red, pink, light pink, blush. So beautiful together. So if I go like one layer down, I've got a couple more things waiting here. So the first thing is an ornamental kale, which has just like a little flush of purple, violet, red going on in the center. And then I found these tiny things here. They are, again, not really labeled properly. I think they just said like, yep, here we go. Kvyata Ravatova. So again, who knows what it is? I mean, you probably know what it is. I've seen the garden centers before and it has a really interesting, intriguing texture when you look at it. And I think what it does, it brings like a lovely texture to the entire planting and also the color is very beautiful because it lightens everything up. And the last thing I'm having in my shopping cart are mums. So I'm gonna take four mums in this pinkish tone. And as you can tell, again, they're full and full of buffs. So this is really what you wanna go for. So let's head back home and start the project. Hey, I'm back from the garden center. I'm in my garden now, but it is a new day. Actually, it's two days later. Because what happened when I returned from the garden center, the weather was having quite a dip. So a strong wind kicked in that was coming from the Baltic Sea. It was really frosty and cold and we had a light drizzle. So I was just really not having it. And I thought, no, this is not a good day for any kind of gardening. So it's two days later. It is still overcast, but it's no windy. So you can tell here. But it's still a good day for gardening, actually, because it's not like really cold. There's no wind, there's no rain. So I thought this is a good day to start with a project. And you can already tell where I am. So this is the area that I want to tackle and work on today. So this is the actually like the main entrance to our house. Normally we would say like the front entry, but our main entrance is not at the front. So it's not like a front entry. So if you come to our house from the street, there is no entry, how it would normally work, I think, on most of the houses. So you need to go actually to the back of the house and really into the garden almost to get to the front entry, which I kind of like, to be honest, because people get to see the garden or first idea and a first glance of the garden. So anyways, what I plan on doing now is that I want to flip the phone and just show you basically how the pots are looking that I want to work on today. They're standing to my left, they're not looking good. And maybe just a quick view on the things that I bought, because I bought two more things, which were really like a last minute kind of purchase that I did in the garden center. And then it's really time just to clean up that space here, because it's not looking so great, but I'm just gonna make that a little quicker on the video then. So hope you enjoy it. So here you go, this is the front entrance to our house. And then you can tell already like to the left, these are the things that I prepared, all the stuff that I need. And then as I swing around to my right, there you can tell this is everything that I bought in the garden center. And this is basically what I can work with. So these are all the pots and the plants that are still in there. So just quickly walk you through that. So you see a lot of like dead and brown material. So most of those were petunias and I think these were dahlias actually, these were dahlias here, but without any watering, they were not having the time of their life. Anyways, I also have these. That made it fairly well without any watering. They just look a little bit stringy. They really look like long spaghettis coming out of the pot. And they're not hardy at all. So I'm just gonna take them out and they go in compost heap as well. But what I have, I have like two really beautiful pots that are like um, basket weave. So you can tell here a little bit. They started aging, which I kind of enjoy in a basket weave. And then I've got all the pots kind of like the same type. So they're all in this like, what color is it? Taupe, pretty much. Like this dark brownish grayish tone. And again, they also started aging. So I like when pots are doing it actually, because I feel it makes them a little more special. Then I've got um, two boxwoods in here like cut as into spheres so they're definitely gonna stay because they look really good one looks a little better than the other so this one had a lot of really fresh good growth here you can tell it's not looking terrible there's still a lot of small leaves but they're both looking really nice considering that they had zero watering throughout the entire summer season when I was gone so I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that then there's like a sweet potato vine so they're definitely gonna go out because they're not hardy at all and then here I've got or five pots actually with nice things that I'm going to keep. So I have like my little Christmas tree actually here, which I'm going to incorporate. And later in the season, there's going to be some Christmas lighting and maybe it's going to get a partner. So maybe another tiny Christmas tree. Then I got one Eucharist still that really enjoyed this life in its tiny pot. 
and three small pots with ivy inside. And the ivy as well, if you look at it, it looks, this is just like one tiny pot with an ivy plant. Oh, and Alfie. Uh, and with an ivy inside. And I thought, wow, they really look nice. I'm really happy with those. And I think that they're going to look really beautiful in my autumn planting, actually. So if I just swing over, oh, hold on a second. There she is. Alfie. Hello. Hello. She's in a little bit in a playing mood, so I need to find a little toy for her in a second. So this is everything that I bought. I mean, I showed you most of the things. The only two last minute purchases that I did are like one Eucara. So like this lime green foliage one. I'm always attracted by colors like these. If it's on foliage or blossoms or anything, I think they're really pretty. And then two of these here, where again, I'm not really sure what it is. I know it's a winter green, I think. Um, and well, they were on discount. And I just thought like, oh, the purple blossoms, they look really nice in the combination. And especially again, they reflect the purple from the aster. And then this is like a really nice thing that actually I bought in Germany and took with me. So I bought one more wicker basket where I thought this is just really beautiful, like how chunky it is. And I don't really know what the brand is. So they all come always with these like silver tags here. I still remember them from my time when I was living in Amsterdam. So my balcony in Amsterdam, I always used um, the ones from this brand here and they are really sturdy, have really good quality. So I can really hardly recommend any of you guys, if you ever think about like wicker baskets, this is really a good option. And what I think I might do is like put the aster in the basket. I think that'll look really cute actually. Then you can tell like here, the stairs that go up to the front to the door to the main entrance they are looking really dirty so we really need to do a clean session here and then some more dead petunias here because we have this tiny like I don't want to say bad I don't really know what it is it's kind of like an inbuilt container almost so we mainly have like a hatch inside of it which protects us from the wind but I always try and put something nice in here as well so let's see if I have anything left over otherwise I'm just going to pull the dead petunias and see what happens and here you see all of the materials that I need. So again, I've got my organic fertilizer, which is like the, um, the bone shards or the bone flower. So this is what I always use in any project. Then I got one plastic pot, which I might pot in the new wicker uh, or the basket we've planted. And then I've just got a few materials here, not a lot. I've got my kneeling pad, which Alfie, I think, already is munging on a little bit. Then again, I just got my one shovel, pair of scissors, and in my wheelbarrow, I've just got like, oh, I got my gloves, of course, and I have like uh, two bags of fresh potting soil. So let's start the project. I've made it myself comfortable. I'm on my kneeling pad on the driveway. So to my right, you can see all of the plants that I want to work with today. And to my left, there are all of the pots that I cleaned. So I did, I really took out everything, all of the old soil, because even though that none of these plants is really going to root in anymore during this time of the year, I still think it's good like to have a fresh start for them and if I start like potting up some spring plants for example next year I could just like see if I can just pull them out and if I can I know they haven't rooted in and I can just still work with a soil that's in the pots now that I just put freshly inside of them. So you can see my two boxwoods here they're still looking really good and nice I've got to keep those. I already popped the aster in the wicker basket and I think it looks really cute in there so this is definitely going to go inside there. So how I normally start when I do like a little arrangement like that is I'm going to look just like what plants I have, what pots I have, and without even putting soil or anything in there, really potting them up, I'll just take them, position them like in different kind of pots and see what goes in where, kind of shape, dimension. Maybe I want to put like more than one plant in a pot and what works well. So this one I'm going to do in a second with you guys, but before I just want to show you how I pot up a single plant. So I'm just going to start with the eucara here at the front because I really know in what kind of pot I want to put them. So I think this one here, is just the perfect size for it. So if you look at it, the foliage is kind of like hanging over a little bit, really gently and nice. And I think this is gonna look really glorious and good. So what I do at this point is like, um, normally when you buy these pots, they have always like the big hole at the bottom. And if I happen to have a crock of like an old pot that kind of broke during winter, or the, I don't know, just fell over, tipped over, and then I have shards, 
they're actually quite good to keep them. So you would use those crocs, put them in the base, and what happens is when you put soil on top of it, not all of your fresh soil will be washed away. I don't have any more crocs, which is not a bad thing because I wasn't that clumsy and all of my pots are still looking good. So what I use is sometimes like the base of one of these pots basically. So what I do is I would just take a plant out, come with my scissors and cut the bottom part off so that the top part here is for the trash and the bottom part, which I still have one actually in here, I could just use, put it upside down because in the middle of that one, there is no hole usually. Let me check. No, there isn't. Because um, then that covers up the hole in your pot. So now I feel like this is good and not all of the fresh soil will be just washed out if I start watering them. So the first thing I do is I will just put a little bit of soil in my pot. So I've got my shovel here, my potting shovel. And a potting shovel in general is just a little different because it's a bigger shape. So you could just like put more soil in it. So I really love these. I use them for quite a lot of projects actually in the garden. So just a little bit in there because the pot from the Eucara has a quite good size actually. I think that is enough. And then what I do, I just use here, that is a little bit of fertilizer, just at the base, because I don't use like any liquid fertilizer, anything on these now uh, for the coming weeks. So I just do this and I think like this is enough for them. And normally I'm quite successful with that. Because um, when I keep the Eucharist in the pots, then starting from next spring, I would probably give them a nice liquid fertilizer, but now it's gonna be okay. So if I put it in there, I can tell about the height, how it's looking. So it's looking quite all right. It's actually a little too much soil in here already. And all I do is I just push it a little bit to the side of the pot. I'm not gonna take anything out now. Firm it in, this looks good. And then I can just take a little bit of more potting compost on my shovel, just gently around the side. Then you just firm it in. from all sides. So make sure that there are no air pockets, make sure that there's soil all the way around, really firm it in nicely. Because when there are air pockets inside, frost can get in them. And that is not good if you have, for example, eucharist that you actually really want to keep on, like maybe you want to keep on growing them in a pot or you just want to continue with them in your garden. So try and make sure that you give them a nice home now so that they will definitely thrive in there and they'll be happy. Because normally eucharist and pots, I'm quite successful with them. I think that they're really one of those plants that like it in pots and they thrive fairly well in a pot. So this looks good. And the last thing I'm going to do now is because I was potting them and after I've taken all the old soil out, this is now ready actually to be staged in a way. So I'll just use my brush and I just brush off all of the extra dirt just quickly all the way around so that they are looking good. I don't necessarily clean them really, like with water or a sponge or anything, because even though the pot here, I told you before, this one has like all these signs of aging. And I kind of think that this is nice because that, that is what makes a pot actually more special and doesn't make it look like it was like brand new from the stores. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'll just select my plants now. Let's see if I use everything, maybe not, maybe yes, let's see. Um, put them in the pots and then maybe already take the pots and put them on the staircase just to get a better feeling on how things are gonna look.
so what do you think? I'm really liking it, not gonna lie. What I did different this year compared to all the other years is that I decided to put all the pots on one side of the stairs and keep the left side completely empty. So I feel there's still enough space to access our main entrance properly. But by putting all the pots together, I feel that they just have a bigger and better impact and I'm really liking it. It really feels like little staging. I'm gonna show you in a second, like just a closer look at everything again. As you can tell on the left, trying to get my finger in there somehow. So here, I ran out of plants. Nothing is in there yet. What I'm gonna do, I will go to the garden center tomorrow. Um, maybe try and find some more eucharist or mums. Need to see, I just wanna have a little red accent in there so that both sides feel a little more cohesive or tied together. But this is already looking really nice. Can't wait to come back now every single day because this is really, for me, it's really inviting and nice. Just really happy that I bought the euchre as like the, the chartreuse color euchre as one last purchase because it really uh, lightens everything up a little bit. The Christmas tree is already looking cute in here. So in a month or two from now, I'm going to put some lights in there. Just gave a very quick trim to the box with sphere just to make sure that it doesn't look so woolly. And even though I still think that the grasses might have been like a little how do I say it now? Not so smart purchase maybe. On the other hand, I love them. I think they're just really lovely how they swing in the wind. Um, they're towering over everything. So in the end, it is actually a really good purchase, even though it's just gonna be fun for maybe a month or two from now. One last thing that I just did very quickly, I harvested some of our last few things from the garden. So here are some more beans, two squashes and a pear with a little bruising on it. Let's see how it tastes. I'm gonna cut it open then. And as you might have recognized, I'm gonna swing around. I wore a gilet suddenly in the video. So what happened is the wind picked up, but the sky starts to clear off, which is really beautiful. So if I just show you the back of the garden and the not so pleasant situation of our lawn, here, still not looking great, but I'm not expecting any improvement this year anyways. But you can see it's looking so nice already. I'm really expecting to have the back garden filled with beautiful evening sun very soon. So some beautiful photos on Instagram, hopefully to follow. I tried to find one area in the garden without wind, but guess what, there isn't. So the staircase it is, and I guess nothing is better than actually this as a little backdrop because this is what we've been working on today. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I can already tell you when it comes to doing potting videos, this is one of my favorite things because you really get to play with that and it's like a seasonal thing. It's one thing where you know you do it for one season and the next year you can do something completely different and it's always like a fun thing. It always keeps you on your toes. You can always play with your creativity. And as a little spoiler, I can already tell you that this is just part one. I still have quite some empty pots and what I plan on doing is potting some more up and use the area in front of the garden shed and do a little staging on our outside dinner table which is underneath the walnut tree so there's more to come. What I want to do as well is just take this opportunity and say thank you to all of you who leave me these beautiful comments like here on YouTube or on Instagram. Um, reading them, I love to comment on them. They make me really happy, give me a lot of joy. It really makes me feel like accomplished in what I'm doing here and that I might do something right, maybe. Not everything looks great. I know there's a lot of things and projects in the garden still going on and sometimes things where I feel like, oh, what have you done? You should have done it maybe better or you should have known better already. But I think this is just the joy of gardening and I really love to take you on this journey with me. So I hope to see you in the next video to come. Until then, take care, bye.